Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Wednesday edition of the NRN Update. I'm your host, Chris Graham, and today we are recapping the events last night up at Big Diamond Speedway, along with what has happened this week in the world of motorsports. It's all big cars on today's show. Look for another episode tomorrow featuring the small cars. If Kryptonite was Superman's downfall, Anthracite has to be just the opposite. Matt Shepard shook off some early night issues to take home the Anthracite Assault up in coal country at Big Diamond Speedway. After failing to qualify for the main event directly from the heat races, Shepard would have to start 21st in the feature after winning the B main. Up front, Ryan Godown and Brandon Grosso put on one heck of a show, while Shepard and Matt Williamson, who started 25th, began a march towards the front. Eventually, Shepard was watching the outstanding battle up front and letting the leaders burn off their tires. On lap 30, it was moving time. Shepard took the lead from Godown and never looked back, leading the final 20 circuits to claim another big event win in 2019. Godown came home second, while Williamson took home the hard charger honors with his third place result. Billy Pouch Jr. and Mike Goulart rounded out the top five. The Short Track Super Series returns to action in two weeks, with the North Division taking on Outlaw Speedway. The South Division has more than a month off before kicking off the season stretch run at BAPS Motor Speedway in July. After a race which saw heavy criticism of the new for 2019 rules package in the NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series last weekend at Pocono, the stars and cars of NASCAR's top division head off to the Irish Hills and Michigan Speedway this week, where the package will run in a similar configuration to that seen at California Speedway during the early season West Coast Swing. Also on the card is a 250 miler for the NASCAR Xfinity Series. Clint Boyer is the defending cup race winner and looking to turn his 2019 season around. Even with the win last year, Boyer ranks only 13th in driver rating heading into this weekend. That list is topped by Chase Elliott with a 104.5 rating at Michigan Speedway. Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, Joey Logano, and Brad Keselowski round out the top five in driver ranking. The TV season for Fox Sports is just about wrapping up, and all of this weekend's racing action from Michigan will air on the Fox family of networks. The NTT IndyCar Series wraps up their toughest stretch of the schedule this weekend at Texas Motor Speedway, where they are joined on the bill by the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series, with both events running under the lights. The trucks will kick things off on Friday night, while the main event will run on Saturday night. Following the month of May in Indianapolis, and a doubleheader in Detroit, this weekend will wrap up a stretch of five points paying races in five weeks, including two off weekends. Even with the home games in Indianapolis, this stretch is brutal on the teams and mechanics, with multiple car rebuilds happening to switch from the road course configuration to oval spec and back twice during that time span. Texas has, known, has been known from the very start for providing some of the most edge of your seat racing anywhere in the world. Joseph Newgarden leads a very tight points race, holding a 15 marker advantage over Andretti Autosports Alexander Rossi. New Gardens Team Penske teammate Simon Pagano used the strength of his double points Indianapolis 500 victory to jump to third in points. The top 10 are separated by less than 100 markers, which means that any mistake can easily eliminate a driver and team from championship contention. Texas also has a history of seeing the championship contenders run and finish up front, with Ganassi Racing Scott Dixon, Team Penske's Will Power, and Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing's Graham Ray Hall all claiming wins in recent years. The NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series is also in action at Texas this weekend, with their race running on Friday night. Amongst drivers entered in the race this weekend, Johnny Sauter leads in driver rating with an even 109.0 rating. Todd Gilliland, Matt Crafton, Spencer Davis, and Grant Enfinger round out the top five in that category. Enfinger leads the point standings by 15 points over Stuart Friesen. The Hallmar driver has a pole position and runner-up finish in last year's Texas race, but is still looking for a maiden trip to victory lane 
after giving up several opportunities already this year to do so. Without those mistakes, the point standings would look markedly different in the truck series. Friesen is running tonight at Albany, Saratoga, before heading down to the Lone Star State for the weekend's events. The USAC Eastern Storm is less than a week away, with the wingless 410 Beasts making stops at several venues across the area. Grandview Speedway will host the kickoff event, with the Jesse Hockett Memorial running on June 11th, and joined by the NASCAR 358 Modifieds for a Thunder on the Hill show. Bridgeport Speedway will be up next, with the Sprinters being joined by the Wing 600 Micro Sprints. BAPS Motor Speedway follows, with the USAC Stars being joined by the URC 360 Sprint Cars and Super Sportsman on Thursday, June 13th. Friday is an off night for the Sprint Cars, but there is another huge event that most of the teams will be heading to, and that is the USAC Silver Crown Series making a stop at the legendary Williams Grove Speedway. This one is a double feature of 410 Sprint Cars and the USAC Championship Cars running a 100 lap $8,000 to win monster of a feature. The Sprint Car Tour continues on Saturday with a visit to Port Royal, where the Wing 410 Sprint Cars will share the bill again. The final stop of the Eastern Storm is on Sunday up at Weedsport in New York. There is a ton of information available online at the track websites, as well as on usacracing.com. The World of Outlaws are back out on tour across the country until returning to Ohio and Pennsylvania in July. A recently announced development has seen the purse swell to a winner's take of $175,000 for that uh, big event out at Eldora in July. The All-Star Circuit of Champions Wing Sprint Car Tour is up in New York this week with stops tonight at Outlaw Speedway and following to State Line and Weedsport over the next two nights. That's going to wrap things up for the Touring Series edition of the NRN Update. Look for a new episode tomorrow where we'll have a spotlight on the small car tracks, including the happenings at Lanco, Linda's Action Track, and others. We'll talk to you tomorrow on the next edition of the NRN Update.